recognizes this cup. I'll get it out of the bag just for you to see it more properly. Can we all raise our hands, please? Can everybody raise their hands? Okay. You can only put your hands down if you did not drink from such a cup. Look around you. See how many people drank from it. Are there any people certain that this was definitely not the cup they drank it from? If so, raise your hand. Otherwise, keep it up. I still see many, many hands. If I turn it around, it might help you a bit. I see some hands dropping right now. But quite a few people still have their hands up. So it as well could be your cup. Or it could be your cup. Or it could be your cup. One of yours, maybe. What you did was that you left a lot of very, very valuable information behind. I work in cybersecurity. And this is the Bushir nuclear facility in Iran. It got attacked in 2010, just like the Natanz facility. And it was not an attack with like conventional weapons, like missiles, but it was an attack with minimal fallout. Minimal fallout, how come? Well, there were some hackers that built together a virus, Stuxnet. And Stuxnet was designed in such a way, from a design perspective, it's beautiful, that it would only and only target these two facilities in the whole world. Many computers got infected, but it only actively damaged these two facilities. What it did was that it disabled the security measures on the centrifuges, and then it ordered the centrifuges to spin too fast, way too fast. So they broke down. The Iranian nuclear program got delayed by one year. So if this is possible with IT infrastructure, could we think of some other information systems that we could maybe target? Here, we see some DNA. ATCG, you might remember that from your biology classes, that these are the building stones of DNA. And you know what? We can read DNA. I can see you all there, and we, we all know that we can read DNA. That's how we know they are those A, T, C, and Gs. But I could read any foreign language. I can read it, but I wouldn't understand the clue of many of them. So it's not only about reading, but also about understanding what you can read. So if I now think of this cup again, maybe I have enough information, there's some lipstick around here, which will exclude some of the men. Um, but I can read the DNA that's left behind on this one. Can we do that? Oh yes, we can. In fact, I got my own DNA analyzed, and these are some real results of my DNA. I have a higher chance of getting venous thromboembolisms and type 2 diabetes, while I have a lower chance on getting Alzheimer's disease. It is possible to know this because we actually can understand what is written. Just like with a computer virus, you have to be able to read code. But if you want to build a virus, you should not only be able to read it, but also to write it, of course. So if you can write code, you would also need to be able to write some DNA. Doing this analysis is not only for the super rich, for less than $300, it's possible to get everybody's DNA analyzed. Your DNA and your DNA. You can do it for less than $300 right now. So would that allow us to maybe have a computer virus spread to humans? Well, not right now because, of course, a computer virus remains in a computer and an organic virus that would spread to humans is organic. But hey, wait. I just told you well, that we can read some DNA and understand what it says, actually. And that's how we know what diseases I'm likely to get or not. That I have a higher chance or a lower chance on. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Imagine that we could write DNA. 
imagine that you could write your own DNA and that you can program a, a, a program <laughs> and print it in an organic system. Well, in fact, that would be writing code and then printing code. So, writing DNA and then printing DNA. But it already is possible to do this. Printing DNA. It is quite difficult to do that without any errors. It is totally not easy, but it can be done. It is possible to print DNA. And just like with the Stuxnet virus, I maybe could use your DNA or the DNA on this cup. I think it's yours. I could use the DNA that I have on this cup to build a virus that targets you and only you. Nobody else in the room would be affected. Affected. You would all get infected, so you can inf infect her, but she's the only one who would get affected. <laughs> That's quite scary, isn't it? <laughs> I think it is quite scary, actually, because you could just be gone very easily if you do this in a good way. Of course, there are some troubles, like your DNA printing should be errorless, because if I would print an error, it might not target you, but you, or you. That would suck, wouldn't it? <laughs> so you have to build in a lot of redundancy, a lot of redundancy, and then I can target this one person. I can target a person, a president, a politician, a criminal, or you. Wouldn't that be a new blackmail method? That I could ask you to do whatever I want you to do, because otherwise I print a virus, I print DNA, I insert it in a living cell, I let it go loose, and it targets you. Who is scared? I want to hear this. <laughs> you, uh, that, that's good. Phew. Yeah. I hope it scares more people. Because there are no regulations around this topic right now. There are no methods to prevent this from happening. But it also has a good side, maybe. How about we use it for the good side and attack cancer stem cells? Because if I can have your DNA, or your DNA, or your DNA, Maybe I can also take the DNA of a cancer stem cell and then insert that virus in your body and then target that cancer and it would die without the need for surgery. So, in non-intrusive ways, I would then become able to cure you. That makes you feel a bit better. I see a big smile on your face right now. Yes, that's also good. But it still has some interesting implications. Because if I, if I can read DNA and I can understand it in an almost perfect way, then I could also target viruses, like the birth flu. Or if I can read DNA much faster, and right now I can analyze anybody's DNA in this room within 50 hours. Well, not I, but it is possible to do that. So within 50 hours, we would know exactly what your DNA looks like and what your chances are on getting diseases. And so, I see a lot of potential in hacking not only computer systems, but the biological information system. Thank you very much.